Just before the video begins, please subscribe and like the videos to help the channel grow. Thanks for watching. But Dr. Landy, there is a rule against that. It's against the code of your profession. It's a, it's a rule that I don't, and I can't explain it to you. In October 1975, Marilyn Wilson enlisted the help of Dr. Eugene Landy to treat Brian. For years she'd been going to doctors, therapists, psychiatrists, but nothing had worked and Brian was progressively getting worse. Landy visited the home and told Marilyn he was an undiagnosed schizophrenic. When Brian became aware of the visits, at first he kept his distance but eventually he wanted to speak to Dr. Landy. Brian later said the only reason he began talking to Landy was to avoid being committed to a psychiatric facility. Dr. Landy's 24-hour therapy would now begin. The first session started in Landy's office, then as Marilyn was busy driving the kids to and from school, home appointments were made. Brian's daily routine went as follows. At 9am he went jogging, at 11 he spoke with Landy, he ate a healthy lunch at 1, then he washed and exercised more before discussions at dinner, normally about Brian's family. It was torture for Brian and he complained every step of the way. An assistant of Landy's moved into the house and Marilyn was given a list of healthy foods to buy and unhealthy foods not to buy. A lock was installed on the refrigerator, phone calls were monitored and Marilyn along with Brian's kids were tutored on how to speak and react with him. Landy drew up a list of negative influences. Almost everyone Brian knew made the list. One night Brian snuck out the house and drove to Three Dog Nights Danny Hutton's house. Together they snorted cocaine almost till dawn, then Brian took a little just for himself and drove back home. In the morning the coke was soon discovered and Landy called Danny Hutton and threatened to have him arrested. Landy also put the word out if any of Brian's contacts supplied him with anything he would have them arrested too. As the weeks went on Brian became frustrated with the setup. At one point he threatened to hit Landy to which Landy demanded he do it. Landy later said, I had to be crazier than Brian. There's only room enough for one crazy person in Brian's head. Another time Brian decided he wanted to go bowling, but when Landy and a group of others reached the bowling alley, Brian changed his mind. Landy told Brian they'd rent the alley for as long as it took for him to bowl. A week, a month, they would just wait. It was Brian's money and Landy was fine with that. After waiting 15 minutes, Brian began bowling. Another time at a charity dinner, Brian felt sick with anxiety and told Landy he was going to throw up. Landy jumped up from the table and began ranting, then do it, do it here, throw up, throw up on the table. Brian sat down and finished his meal. During the recording of the Beach Boys' next album, 15 Big Ones, Landy attempted input on the songs. Not only did he want creative input, but he also wanted a share of profits for the album. Over time, Landy's salary had steadily grown. Starting at $10,000, it was now at $20,000, equivalent to $103,000 in 2020. Marilyn had become tired of the rates constantly rising and wondered where it was going to end. When Marilyn told Brian about this, he went insane. The two confronted Dr. Landy in his office. For the first time in her life, Marilyn saw Brian physically violent. He began punching Landy and Marilyn screamed for him to stop. Landy said, No, no, let him do it. He needs to take his anger out on me. The sessions soon ended. Landy blamed Brian's management, saying, I was interested in making Brian a whole human being. They were interested in getting another album done. 
Six years later, Brian's health had deteriorated to the point everyone around him feared he would soon die. He and Marilyn had divorced in 1979 and Brian was living with a nurse turned carer. Brian was tricked by his management and family to once again return to Dr. Landy. They had sent him a letter saying he was broke and had been fired by the Beach Boys. Landy agreed to treat Brian again, but this time he wanted complete control and no interference. After being checked over at Cedar Cyanide Hospital, Brian was taken to Hawaii where he started, as Dr. Landy called it, a heavy detox. He started a juice fast which progressed to frozen food, then eventually whole foods. Brian began social etiquette practices and by 1983 was living in a house in Malibu, California. There Brian lived with a group of Landy's aides and was cut off from his friends, ex-wife and children. Landy's yearly rate was now $430,000. That's the equivalent to $1.2 million in 2023. When Landy requested more money, Carl Wilson was obliged to give away a quarter of Brian's publishing royalties. Brian was also being drastically over-medicated by Landy. He was prescribed powerful antipsychotic medication along with big doses of Xanax. Landy at this point was Brian's partner in finance and music. In mid-1985, Brian attempted suicide by swimming out to sea as far as he could. Landy's aides brought him back to shore. In 1988, Brian Wilson's self-titled solo album was released. Landy was credited as executive producer and the album was met with positive reviews. The controversy surrounding Landy and the Beach Boys' new single Kokomo overshadowed the album. While working on the album, Brian had said to a studio engineer, Dr. Landy doesn't like me to be in touch with my family too much. He thinks it's unhealthy. At this time, Landy was being closely monitored by the office of the Attorney General of the State of California. They were looking into allegations Landy had illegally prescribed cocaine and aimed to trade to another patient back in 1983 along with using them himself. Landy denied the allegations. In 1989, the company Brains and Genius was formed after Landy had been forced to surrender his license. He had pleaded guilty to illegally prescribing Brian medication. Brian's second solo album, Sweet Insanity, was almost entirely co-written by Landy. The album was rejected due to Landy's lyrics and the inclusion of a rap song. By 1991, two of Landy's former employees came forward alleging Landy was in Brian's will to receive 70% of the estate and publishing. Landy responded by saying, I've never seen Brian's will, he's never told me. I don't think Brian's going to tell anyone what's in his will. Despite claiming no knowledge of the will, he did confirm some redrafting had took place. As ordered by the court, Landy and Brian's partnership was completely dissolved soon after, in mid-1991. He was ordered to have no contact with Brian indefinitely. A year later, in December 1992, Landy was fined $1,000 for violating the court order when he visited Brian in June for his birthday. Landy was portrayed by Paul Giamonti in the film Love and Mercy. A lot of his dialogue in the film was taken from audio recordings of Dr. Landy. Landy's son disputed the accuracy of the film, feeling he was unfairly portrayed. Brian and his wife Linda, however, attested the accuracy of Dr. Landy. Brian stated, Giamatti was very scary as Landy. He even got his voice right. After his last meeting with Brian, Landy moved to Hawaii where he stayed until his death. He died in 2006 of lung cancer. On hearing the news of his death, Brian was devastated. At the time he stated, 
Dr. Landy died today. I know a lot of people didn't like him, but I loved him. In Brian's autobiography, Wouldn't It Be Nice, he dedicates the book to Landy. The opening page reads, To Dr. Eugene Landy, without you, there'd be no music.